So we're going to talk about washi paper and just in collage. Washi paper being the Japanese paper that we, that Yasutomo has, you know, offered for a long time and is expanding the offerings from the more generic, you know, these are great. They're fantastic. And this 6H pad is great for gel printing. If you're like me and you like to gel print, uh, the, this is the best. I love it because it's inexpensive and you get 48 sheets and you can plow through that, make beautiful prints, and then you have a collection of papers. So how I'd I tell you, since I joined Potter School a couple of years ago, I really wasn't that good, or I just wasn't a collage artist. I made a lot of things that I would call collage, what is called now collage fodder. And I used washi paper a lot because I had access to it, right? I mean, it's something that I've had access to for a long time. And what I really love about what I learned, or, you know, just something I've picked up in my relationship and my three years of taking fodder school, and I'm bringing this up because um, it kind of has helped my, my journey as a collage creator or collage maker, because I didn't know what to do with collage. It's like, well, okay, you, you tear pieces, pieces of paper up and you do all this stuff, but what do you do with it? So I'm just going to give you a little quick, and I'm so glad in taking notes and then write, please ask questions. So I'm just going to kind of tell you what I have been doing with collage and what, you know, the people at, um, at Fodder School have been doing. And I have been using washi paper in all of my collage images, all of my collage work, because of, like I said, I've got the best supplies. <laughs> I've got them. So that's what I want to help you with is if you are a fodder school student or you want to take fodder school or you just like collage in general and you want to know about rice paper or washi paper, retraining ourselves to not call it rice paper anymore, but you know, uh, we it's also known as rice paper. And I just want to kind of give you some really good inspiration, hopefully, that you can enjoy using washi as part of your collage creating and fodder or your collage paper creating. Um, so starting with what you do with it. Okay, what do you do with this stuff? Well, I am a card. I love cards. I make cards all the time. And um, a collage is great for cards. So these are layered. And I'm going to do a little technique and showing you how uh, the this was achieved. I'm going to show you that today. But this is just a five by seven piece of paper that's been mounted on a blank cardstock. So boom, I've got a card. All I have to do is add a little writing and I've got the collage of paper or the collage is in the background, creating a nice background for a focal point and a word or a statement. So these, that's one way you can make greeting cards. You could make uh, wall pieces. This is a piece that actually is, well, it was on my wall. It's uh, the same thing, layered with washi paper. It has uh, mostly, mostly washi paper and some regular paper, but I use washi paper all the time. So there's layering going on here and it's on a hard substrate. So you can do things like that, make collaged, um, yeah, ready to hang gifts or whatever, right? You can make coasters out of them. Um, another thing I like to make is like a coaster. You can just do a quick little square, do a quick little quickie collage and just throw some paper on and glue. And I'm gonna show you some basic things um, certainly, you know, the fodder school experience will give you an in-depth, um, in-depth um, sort of thing on that. I'm just going to show you uh, my experience with washi paper and their attributes in creating collage and layering. So uh, this one I just did last week. I did these out of a little, uh, did them at Namta, actually, or I finished them at Namta, and I actually used my so my new papers, the origami papers, and I'm going to go over those in a minute, but I use those as the base. And I think the couple of maybe live, not last but live stream, but the live stream before we talked about those papers and I talked about how we can customize them to make them our own. And this one I had done the, you know, a simple, I think I might've even done it when we were doing our live stream. And then I just added a layer of right, a very thin washi paper, Usagami, which is a fabulous stuff. And I'm going to show you how I worked with that. And I added some white and that's it. And I, oh, and I did, this is also with uh, Usagami. So just layer, creating layers with the base layer being the 
uh, origami paper, but I built upon that and it's completely unique. Pat's here. Hi, Pat. Yay. I'm so glad you're here. And Lynn's here. So great to see. I'm so glad you're here. Okay, so basically just little cards. You can make, you know, artist trading cards. You can make gift cards. You can make tags, as you, a lot of you already do and know. Um, this was the little tag book we started last week. I think I showed it last, a couple of weeks ago, or maybe three weeks ago. But uh, this is using, you know, just using collage as a way to kind of decorate a cover. So this one I actually finished this week. I love these little small journals, these little tag books, which this tag book, the instructions are on the Asatomo YouTube channel, which is great. Uh, they're so nice because I can finish a journal in less than a week. <laughs> Basically, I do a spread a day. One, you know, two, three, oh, like less than four days. So you can finish a whole book and you feel like you've accomplished something because I have a lot of unfinished journals and, you know, <laughs> you can have lots of that going on. Um, hi, Lori. Lori's here. Um, this is one I did in the Fodder School, too. I actually, this was one of the projects. And this is also collage. Um, and washi paper is being employed a lot. The washi paper belly band that has been done with that. And then I have all these little bits and pieces, these little collage pieces. This is washi paper. And what's wonderful about washi paper, if you see, if I'm, I'm going to show this kind of close up, I'm hoping that you can see this. But do you see that soft, furry edges, the really nice little edges? That is the fibers of the, the uh, I think that's the Gossen. And I'll go over the papers. Um, but that those are beautiful, and that's with Sumi ink. So, you know, you can, you can see that um, washi is very versatile for your mixed media and uh, creati creative paper making and paper decorating things. But I'm going to just kind of bring in some goodies here that I've been decorating. And I'm going to show you how I did this one today because it's sort of a fun mixed media thing and it's quick and I want to just, you might have already have gotten kind of what it is, but I'm going to do that today. This was a really fun exercise. So one thing I want to break down is I like to separate my mark making and collage paper creating in a separate activity than the collage. Just, you know, it's just too crazy to try to do a collage and create all the papers ahead of time or during that session. So it's fun to break it down. You can see my cat kind of got a hold of it. <laughs> I have a new assistant, by the way. His name is Jude and he's quite energetic. He finds things and he says, I think I like that and takes it. <laughs> so it's kind of funny. But I've got these papers that I've been kind of working with. These are all washi papers. Some of these are the origami papers that uh, I've designed for Yasutomo. They're already collaged, which makes it if you want to do a quick collage, you only have just a few minutes, you're going to, you can do this. And I, I'll show you a couple of those ideas. But we're going to grab these. This one, um, this I just did this morning, well, a little while ago. And it is Usagami, which is this wonderful paper I'm going to show you. You might have already heard about it because I've been talking about it a lot. But it's really nice. And it's going to be a great layering uh, paper for doing a collage. I've got bits and pieces here. Uh, just some old bits here. Here's another Usagami. I did this earlier this week. I printed this. Now, this is interesting. In fact, I almost jammed my paper printer. So, oh, my printer. Be careful when you are printing. And I've talked about this before. The Usagami can be put through a laser printer. I happen to have a uh, Canon. It's the color. It's a color laser printer. And I'll tell you which one it is, just in case, if you have one. LBP632CDW. This is this printer works. Now, every printer is going to be a little different, of course. But uh, yesterday, or the, yeah, I think it was yesterday, I was preparing for our demo today, and I put it in the wrong side. I actually done, I did set it through the wrong side in my paper. The Usagami became unglued, and... It jammed and I almost ruined my printer. So, but I, I did save it, thank God, because my husband is mechanical and he helped me out. Otherwise, I was it was a loss. But what I did with this, so this is um, Usagami, which if you see the Usagami, and this is kind of this is the it comes like this in a package. But when you take it out of the package, you're gonna get these super thin, super thin tissue sheets. Okay. So what I did is um, this one's already been put through the printer. What I did was. I put a very thin 
line of glue stick around the edge. Just a dry, just a thin half inch line edge right around that. And then I laid the Usagami smooth side facing up on the, and I lined it up and then I just pressed it down, waited for it to dry. And when I put it through the printer, of course, go through your printer's directions. Um, I had it in the wrong way. So I think I put it in side down and that's why it jammed. But I put it through and it came through and I'm gonna take this off because it's still on the backing. So how you take it off is you just kind of cut where you think that your adhesive is, you know, where you've cleared the adhesive. And I'm not sure I have yet, so I'm gonna just cut it a little more. I don't wanna lose all these gorgeous pieces, but I do want to clear the adhesive. And you just kind of, let's go around here. I don't know how much glue I put on there. It's been a day, so. But you just kind of clear the adhesive and then you can peel it off. There we are, I think I can get it. But it's a really great, paper because now I've got this incredible, gorgeous, yeah, I can even peel it off now. Yeah, see, it's strong enough. It's not, it's not really tearing the paper from the glue stick adhesive, which is nice. Um, I, I've never done it that way before. And what's interesting is I look at it and you can see there's a little ghost image on the, on the backing paper. Interesting. Hmm. So, so the ink burns through a little bit on, on the paper, but now I've got this transparent piece of collage paper and I'm really excited. And this was a photocopy of some artwork I did and I've got some. So that, this is how, what I like to do is I like to gather my papers. Some of them will be the usagami. So I have the thin layering kind of papers, which I would call these, which is usagami. And then this one is the asagami. Now asagami, and I hope to not confuse you. I get all excited and I start to go all over the place but so i'm gonna this is usagami i just showed you things you can do with that you can make marks on it directly with ink like i did here i just took sumi ink and made some circles i made uh some leaves with some ink you can rubber stamp on it like i've got oh yeah you can just rubber stamp on it it takes ink really well it also takes fine line pens and there's this nice printed piece and so i kind of had kind of i separate my layers, my thin layers being on the top. Um, so I've got maybe some pieces of usagami in here. I know I do. So I'm going to just pull some out. Some I've done ahead of time, you know, maybe the last few weeks. This is just a usagami. It's really thin. I rolled, it's basically a gel print, but then I off rolled some, um, you know, just using it as to roll off extra paint. And then I started to doodle in it. This was a, a, something I was on the phone the other day and I started to doodle inside. So I got these beautiful little tiny delicate lines and I doodled with the gel, not gel, it's the um, Detail Master Pigment Liner. I'll show you that in a minute. I'll, I'm gonna show you that because it really is fun. Just if you just have a piece of this kind of laying around and it needs more detail, you can just kind of start doing that and then you can use it for making a collage later on. So I've got my, I'm gonna grab some more usagami in my pile of goodies, my layered goodies. Now I think that's it. Okay, so usagami, I got it in one pile. And then I'm gonna take my asagami. Now asagami is a hemp paper and it has a really interesting feel to it. It's kind of crisp, it kind of a, has a crisp snap. I don't know if you can see it or, or if you hear it, but it's there. It's really nice to, to um, print on but it's also really nice to draw on, just directly right on. You can even take a pen and I'm in a loop mode lately, but see, you can get these nice fine lines. There you go, let's just take a look. It doesn't go through. Um, and you can just kind of, you can make, you can do hand lettering, uh, whatever you wanna do. You can just create little bits and pieces that you might wanna use in your collages that you might want to layer layer later on. You can be saturated. You can make um, really kind of doodled things. But you can just use it as a drawing paper. It's amazing. And then you can use it for the afterwards. You can collage with it. You can just use these little bits, these little bits and pieces for your collage. But that is why I love these papers. They're so much more durable and strong 
compared to let's say, um, you know, most most just bond papers, and they're thin so that you can layer and create um, beautiful collages with them without overbuilding on top. So that's the asagami. Now this is printed asagami through my laser or a printer, and isn't that beautiful? So now it's got this nice kind of translucent. It's not transparent, but it's translucent. And I've got that for that layer. Let's see if I might have some more in here somewhere printed. Um, Asagami is also this one. I printed this one out. Oh, that's actually just bond paper. I'll go over that in a minute. <laughs> Here's an Asagami done with a gel print. So it's got this nice, so it takes gel, it takes the gel process really well, jelly printing. So I just got like some little Asagami samples here for you to, to look at. Let's see. But I'm going to do some things with this. Okay, oh, that is going to go there. And before I get my table gets too crazy, this is just your, these are uh, kind of a combination of 6JM and 6H, which is my the go-to, my favorite two papers. Oops, I think I blew in the cover. I lost the cover sheet, but here's the one. 6H and 6JM. I lost, I don't know what I did with it. My cat ate it. No, I don't know. Something happened, but anyway, it's somewhere. But 6JM and 6H, one is thinner than the other. This one's a little bit thin, uh, thinner and more translucent. And this one is a little thicker. And again, amazing for gel printing and all kinds of mixed media creating and so much fun. Oh, and this one, this is a 6, 6JM. And I love this gel print. Gel print. Um, but you can just see how it, it's possibilities are endless. Here's one. This is 6JM. And I all I did was just you run some string, you know, I did a roller and then I ran a string brayer that I had, a brayer that I covered in string. And I got these really cool patterns. And I'm saving these. I basically save these not necessarily in color ways, but I save them in just like types of paper, uh, usually. Um, and I don't, I should save them in color patterns and ways. And this one is 6JAM and I did Shibori and I think I've showed that before. But I'd like to save all these and get them ready. I'm gonna put them in my little pile here. And I'm going to show you some basic, just collage making, or collage paper making kind of ideas just for fun. I'm going to take this and I'm going to put something underneath because I know I'll make a mess if I don't. There we go. And I'm going to just do a little mark making session with this, just a little one. So you can kind of see where you can go with this. I've got some uh, green, some green. Uh, it's not green. It's black Sumi ink and it's KF2. And it's a really nice, I'm going to pull my camera up just a little because it's maybe too. I hope I'm not trying to get the whole table. There we go. I think that's better. So I've got my ink, and I love that this ink has a little PVA in it, so it's a little more water resistant. So when you're doing collage, this black sumi ink is going not going to bleed when you use glue or gel medium. So I like that. And I'm going to grab a brush, and I could make some marks using a big brush. Or I, oh, I'm going to try something different. I know I do this. I get kind of I love. Oops, there goes everything. I'm going to grab a, uh, let's see, a pocket brush if I can find one. A stash, there it is. And I'm going to try something a little different. Normally I do little tiny marks, but I want to try, of course, right now I can't get the brush into that, <laughs> so I need a dish. All right, I'm going to grab a dish. I'm going to put it in. There, I got enough ink, I think. And Karen, I'm so sorry. I think I missed which paper you have in front of you. I'm using Usagami. Usagami, thank you. Okay. So Usagami, here we go. I'm going to go really crazy. I'm going to do like really bold. Oops, that's not bold. There we are. Bold. I just want to try making some marks. And I love that. I just think that's going to be really cool. And this, of course, won't dry in this session, you know, in today's session. So I'm just doing it just, to, you know, for an advance for next time, maybe. But I have other ones I've prepared. So you can kind of see it's really soaking into the paper and uh, it's gonna it's making a really interesting 
set of marks that I could use. Very high contrast, which is really great for collage. I'm going to go in this direction. And I'll tell you, I love, you're, you can't smell this because you're not here with me, but this stuff smells really good. It, it's, it actually calms me down. It's a, an aromatherapy thing. They put some kind of stuff in it that makes you just kind of calm down. And just this brush, this hockey brush, BFC one, I love this for, look at the little marks I'm making. And it's just kind of doing, it's sort of separating a little bit, but I'm getting these really interesting marks. And see how quickly I'm filling this page? It's pretty quick. And I'm actually only loading the, I've only loaded the ink a couple times. In fact, I, if I, the less I load it, the more interesting these marks become. But you can just make a, a page of these fun little marks and then you can use them for your um, collage making. I'm going to do a couple more right in here while the brush still has ink in it. And then I'm going to set that aside. But I wanted to, you know, that's a fun way to kind of get sort of loosened up and like not being really thinking about the final, like what it, what it is. You know, this is just a little abstract mark making and it's going to be used for a future collage project. And let me show you the other side of it. So it's really, really, it's kind of soaked on the other side, but it really takes the ink really nicely. I will set this aside, let it dry. And I'm going to kind of bring in an idea. Okay, so I did that. Oh, here's the other idea. I wanted to show you this because I thought it was so cool. This is just another little thing I was doing this week, and I thought, how fun. I'm going to show people on, on the Facebook Live <laughs> how easy it is. So if you want to make, you know, you've got an old book. This one is some, you know, vintage book page. It's got yellowing on the side. Kind of needs... You know, it needs something. It's kind of boring, actually. So I'm going to put a piece of paper under it because I know I'm going to get messy. And this is deli paper, by the way. And I probably will use the deli paper that I make a mess on for a future creating, future creating. So, um, so here's what I do. This is where you can do like a secret writing. You can mark words that you want to like highlight. And let's say you like, you know, you just see a whole thing. You could do like a magnetic poetry thing or something like that. I mean, it's really fun. You can do all kinds of things, but I'm going to just do some kind of, just some swirly kind of things in here. And I'm just going to, and I can't see it, which is kind of fun. I'm just making a mark and I'm using a, the clear artist crayon. And what I, I'm going to kind of make it tight so I can kind of get lots of texture. And you can scribble, you can go all over the place, like just whatever you want to do. It's just, just have fun. Get your... Get your exercise. You know, I'm totally getting, uh, I'm kind of moving my hand really fast or my arm, and I'm just getting, making marks. Now, I could do the ink, and I'm going to try just doing ink on one side, and most likely it's going to just be so dense it will cover the, uh, the crayon. But I'm going to show you. I'll try. And then I'll do the other side in watercolor because I want you to see the difference. Since this is already loaded with ink and it's pretty dark, this is probably just going to totally cover, but let's see what happens. Oh no, it doesn't. Ooh. <laughs> so I'm kind of brushing it lightly. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> I love this. I love seeing this. I did not expect. So I'm going to kind of do a dry brush over it because I'm liking the little stria, the stria or whatever that's called. I'm kind of liking that, uh, this, this line stuff going on here. So I've just now created very quickly. I'll do it halfway. I've just created a really interesting high contrast bit of collage paper that I, I'm going to be able to use in future collages. Simple, simple, right? Nothing, you know, nothing crazy, but just there. Now I'm going to take, move this out of the way, ink, get out of the way. And I'm going to just take my watercolors and I've got my Niji watercolors. This is truly a mixed media because I am bringing out all the medias, right? We've got I'll show you acrylics in a moment. You're going to see the watercolors. We have inks. We have crayons. This is truly a mixed media um, exercise or, or activity. So I'm going to find, oh boy, I need a watercolor brush. And of course, I'm just going to grab, here we go. I'm going to grab a fusion brush. Oh no, I've got a hockey brush too. Well, let's use a hockey brush since Oh, no, I'm going to use a fusion brush. <laughs> Sorry, I have to do this because it's a. this is a sample of the one 
And I believe if I'm wrong, Katie, let me know. But this um, this is a, the flat fusion brush that we're going to be bringing in. Quarter and that a half is, inch. Yeah, I, if that has the brown handle, that's maybe a slightly older version. If the black handle ones, I think, are a little bit shorter, um, yeah. just in the handles. But the brush okay. tips are just the same. Okay, but the bristles are the same, right, Phoebe? That's right, right. All right, so this is the true test about these brushes. I'm going to just do, I'm going to use this little one because the big one's not going to fit in the trays, but I'm just going to put some watercolor. Now I could put, I'll probably use gel medium on this later, but I'm going to use some of the Payne's Gray and the dark colors, that are, the moody colors that are in this set. And that's why I like the art of this uh, artist studio set because it does have all the colors, including the mixing colors plus moody colors, I like to call them. They're dark, you know, kind of dark. I'm going to just put some water. Ooh, 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 see, I get excited about this. Look how it soaks. The watercolor kind of soaks in. Now I could take it up there, but I like this. Watercolor is just floating and soaking more into the paper. Not so much going through, but I get this nice, beautiful gray, blue gray and indigo kind of color going on, which I wanted a high contrast. So I wanted it dark and moody. And I just love that. So I'm putting it over with my little half inch brush and it feels stiffer than a watercolor brush. So I'm able to kind of scrub over. It's not holding as much water though as a traditional watercolor brush, but it's doing wonderful for what I'm doing it for. So you can see I'm actually not dry brushing so much as I'm really loading the, the um, brush with as much color as I can. And I'm kind of just going over the whole thing and I'm getting this nice high contrast. I love that. <laughs> so I've got this great little piece. Didn't take me long, right? I mean, it was just a couple of minutes. Here, I'm going to do this. I'm going to cover it. I love this. I'm just kind of do a little mixed media fun here. Kind of scumble or scrub over and just kind of get some of that blue gray going on in there. I love that. So I've got something that I'm going to be able to tear up later. I love it. Love it. Love it. Okay. All right, done with that. See how quick that was? So you can make, you know, have a session creating these little fun papers. And then I've got some prepared ahead of time. So I'm going to show you a quick, I'm calling it a quickie collage because it is quick. And I'm going to use, oops, I've got, I'm going to clean the water out of that so I can use it for um, my collaging and gluing. And this is going to give us the test of our fusion mixed media fusion capabilities. All right, so that's clean, ready to go for the glue and any acrylic paints that I'm going to use. I, only, I have a very limited paints today because I, this morning I did these. I did this one kind of like the way this one is. So this is step one and step two is painting over it. And then there's a third step. Basically, I'm talking about layers. So what I'll, I'll do the first layer, um, I, what I have is I love this paper, the Nietzsche Hot Press. It's awesome because it is a little smoother than the cold press. It's great for collage. It's a great 100% cotton substrate that you can use to make collages. And I watched, I have to say, I was inspired by uh, Bob Burridge. If you know Bob Burridge, he does these Bob Blasts on YouTube. He hasn't done it in a while, but, um, or I was seeing an old one and I was totally inspired with what he was doing with collage. Cause I always like to be inspired, um, by different artists and, and he's so hands-on and so much fun. So I'm going to just do a very simple, bright, just kind of high contrast collage using my papers that I, my washi papers. And remember I have all these papers that I had brought, that I had done earlier, some are from my, from this. I'm going to go ahead and just get another piece of paper because I know I'm going to make a mess. <laughs> Deli paper to the rescue. <laughs> there we go. And you know, you can take those clear crayons. I know we love these crayons. After, let's say I do a layer, maybe I can do one on this. It'd be fun to do this. Um, I'm going to do a little scribbling while I'm thinking because I'm going to use, I'm going to paint on top of this today. So I'm just going to do some scribbling. Just, you know, clear scribbles. Oh, I like that. Just make marks. Okay. Done. You can't see it, but we're going to see it when I put, I hope we'll see what happens when I do the acrylics over it. So 
I'm going to take some paper and I'm just going to take some stuff that I had done and I'm going to start plotting. And I like to do really high, just trying to get some high contrast um, image here. And I really could use a ruler rather than just carrying it by hand. So I'm going to use a ruler for this one. I'm just going to take it and I'm going to tear it like this. And I should have done it with this one, but I'm not going to worry about it. Let it, let the rough sides happen. No big deal. And I'm going to take another piece. I'm just going to get some smaller pieces. And the whole thing about this is to get some kind of high contrast, something that's going to really pop, you know, so you just kind of look for uh, focal, you know, things that have pattern and then also resting areas for your eye. Hmm, this pink is pretty fun. I think I might just grab some of that. This is 6JM that was gel printed. I'm just going to just grab a piece of it. I, I'm not sure I'll use all of it, but some of it. And then you always take your bigger pieces and set them aside. They're like your, you know, you've got your large sheets and then you'll start getting smaller and smaller bits and pieces that you can save as well. So I'm going to grab, oh, let's see. What do we want to do here? We've got the, that's the hard part. <laughs> Here's a good resting piece. It's smaller. This is also, this is 6H, I think. It's a little thicker. It's been gel printed. Yes, it's a little thicker. And I'm just going to take that and set that aside. And I'm going to take, oh, I love this. This is high contrast. This is the 6JM that's been shiboried or, you know, folded and dyed or dipped. So it looks like I think I got, I've got enough. I believe I have enough to cover this whole card. So usually I would use in if I wasn't demoing, I would be using this Nori paste to do this. Actually, I'm going to do it because it's all right. I've got a piece that's prepared. So I'm going to go ahead and use Nori paste the way I would normally use it. And I'm going to use it as my base layer because I'm using cola, I'm using a washi paper. It's perfect. Nori paste is the perfect paste for it. It even says perfect paste for the perfect project. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Um, so I'm going to take the five by, this is my five by seven. I've got the cotton side and I'm just going to put some nori paste down like just on the whole thing and it made bow because there's a lot of moisture in it the thing that I like about this other than let's say if I were to use a gel medium Chris is here hi Chris if I were to use just gel medium you know what's going to happen is if it stays in my brush I'm going to lose that brush right if unless I'm really careful about washing out the brush so this nori paste is I can leave it in my brush for days and I can wash it out. It is resoluble in water. So I'm just going to cover this. One thing I could do because it's starting to warp and I feel that warpage happening. And I'm going to spritz the back just to kind of tame it down a little so that it kind of lays flat. The card lays flat. 100% cotton. You can do that. You can get away with this. See how it laid flat? It's now not bowing anymore. Just a little bit of water on the back has now tamed it down enough. So I've got a coating of the nori paste, and I'm going to just start laying down paper. And I think I'll lay down the first one that I had done, and I'm going to just stick it right over my, uh, see, I'm going to move it this way. And nori paste, the beauty of that, is repositionable for quite a while. Um, you can move it around. It is quite repositionable because it has, it's slow drying. So I've got that first layer. I'm going to take the second layer, maybe this one I think is going to be nice. I'm going to trim, no, I'm not, I'm just going to lay it right over that. And I'm going to take my nori, and you can even use water if you want to thin it a little bit so it's not so thick, but it seems to be okay. And I'm going to just lay this right, kind of offset it so it's not smack dab in the center. And I'm just going to brush over it. And this is the Usagami printed with my laser. You can mix, if you want to mix, let's say you want to mix matte medium with the, the nori, you can, but just observe, you know, the cautionary, you know, make sure it's, you can keep your brush wet until you're ready to clean it. Uh, so now I see an opportunity to add this pink layer, because I think that's really pretty, except maybe not so much of it. I'm just going to make a little thinner strip like that. And this has a little rough edge, which I really like. I'll put it on this side. And I'm kind of just putting it on the paper. It really doesn't matter since this is really an underlayer for the major, what I'm going to do to it. So I'm not trying to make a composition or anything. It's just quick, 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 quick. 
And then the last bit, I think I'm going to use that. Oh, this stuff. That's what I wanted to use. I might even just, let's just do it this way. I want to go this way, maybe here. Well, I don't know. <laughs> Decisions. I'm just going to put it right on there. And then use a little bit of Nori to kind of get that pasted down. And then one last bit, because I really wanted to get that in here, is this little bit here. And I'm just going to do it like that. So I've got it, and now of course I'm going to have to. This would it's going to take some time to dry, but I'm going to show you the next step, and then I'll sh we'll work on the one that I worked on earlier today. And you can kind of get the little corners down, kind of smooth them down, and you can also use a um, a where is it? <laughs> it's a little tool somewhere in my yeah I'll find it. <laughs> it's okay. It's a just a uh, it's a uh, kind of a palette, no, what do you call those? Spatula thing. All right, so this is stuck to my, here we go, my paper. Oh, what a mess, here we go, here we go. Okay, what I do is I, because Nori paste is still tacky, I mean, it's not quite bonding to the paper yet. I can feel, I could probably reposition everything right now, but I'm gonna just trim off the back side so I can kind of see what I'm dealing with, just like this. And then just then you'll know it won't look so crazy. And what's nice about the nori, I'm getting getting it all over, all over my fingers. But what's going to happen is it just comes off so easy. So it's a good first layer of um, paste if you're using washi paper, especially with washi. Um, not so much with vellum or less absorbent papers, but washi it is so perfect for washi. Look how I like that, just like that. I think that's pretty pretty nice. I like it a lot. I'm just going to leave it and let it dry. Okay, now next step. So let's pretend that this, this is that. <laughs> so that's dry and it's good and ready to go. And I'll just stick this thing up away. And I'm going to show you the thing that I said Bob did that was really cool. Bob Robert Bridge. I just thought it was awesome. I'm going to take the, this brush, and I don't care that there's nori paste on it. It's not going to hurt because it's mixable. All right, so I'm just reading. Uh, oh, got me started on nori. Oh, yes, Lynn. <laughs> yes. I'm going to make sure I don't miss any, any uh, goodies. Okay, here we go. Yeah, this is the fun part. So I've got some color I could use just an acrylic. I'm thinking... I might just try this blue and maybe some white. I've got zinc white, which is transparent, and I'm gonna, I've got titanium white. I'm going to go with the titanium white. But I'm thinking this is a fluid. I think I want to use a heavy body. So I'm going to grab a heavy body paint if I can, grab, if I can find it. <laughs> I know I've got it. Yeah. It was like I've got all kinds of paints in my little drawer here, so I'm just going to grab a tube of heavy body. It's just a – oh, that's zinc. We don't want zinc. We want – we want titanium, and the reason we want titanium, or just something that's thick, because I want to show you this fun little technique that Bob showed. I'll just use this blue, because I like that, and this blue, and I guess I'll have to use a little of this titanium, because I can't find the tube, titanium tube, so it's okay. All right, so here's the fun part. So you're going to take your paint, <laughs> I love this, and I'm just going to woo put it on there. Looks like it's kind of needs to be stirred. And I maybe put a little paint on here. Maybe just a little blue and then some white. Okay. Just dribble a little white. Ooh, just doing that. Fun, fun. Oh yeah. But uh, I'm not I'm gonna stop. I'm not gonna, I mean, that's not the end of it. <laughs> All right, so what I need to find, oh there it is. This is what I was talking about. It's a wedge. It's not a it's not a spatula. <laughs> the wedge. I was talking about that, and now I found it. So I'm also going to grab a little tool. It's a little rubber silicone thing. Um, you can grab, if you have things like Catalyst, you know, these little silicone scrapers, whatever you've got in your stash, if you have that kind of stuff. I'm just going to use the mixed media brush, and I'm going to just kind of go over the whole thing. And I know you're thinking, why is she covering her collage, right? You're going, what is she doing? <laughs> That's, well, no. So I'm just going to cover it. I know it's crazy, but wait till you see. 
<laughs> now I, I did put a little too much paint on it, but that's actually kind of, you're going to see what's going to happen. So I covered it up. Terrible, terrible, right? I just covered it up with painting. And I'm going to now start making things have fun with this. This is like finger painting for adults. So I'm just going to kind of go, and you're going to see as I pull, I'm going to pick up the a collage that's underneath. And I'm just going to make little lines and drawings. Oh my gosh, too much fun. This is like a free-for-all, totally fun thing. <laughs> Isn't that fun? I just think that is so cool. And I'm kind of wasting some paint here, but that's kind of what it is. And I'm going to take another tool. I'll put this one over here. Let's see, I've got this one. And I may make some scratches in a second too, but I've got this little tool. I want to try just seeing if I can make some little marks. Yes, little tiny, like whatever these are called, um, little dash things. And I'm going to put a couple maybe here. Whoops, I just whacked the camera, sorry. <laughs> and I can also, if I don't have, you don't have these fancy little wedges, you can just use... Well, I don't I, I don't recommend the finger, but you could use even the uh, crayon. You could, and you know, I did color, but I don't see that the crayon is resisting. So, but I can take my crayon and or pencils and make little marks. See, I'm just kind of making little, little marks kind of going through like that. So even though I'm not you, it's this, the crayon is just moving the paint around. But I think that's fabulous. Now, also, if I want to pick up an area where I just really want to, see I can kind of rub off you know kind of clear an area which I like I like that too so basically you're basically just taking sections uh, and it is a messy experience so just beware but it's so much fun <laughs> to do this and then you can take little just kind of make circles like this and and that would be the second layer so we have our first layer is a collage and our second layer is paint, right? We've got the paint. Now that has to dry. I've got one, two, I was gonna do a third circle here. Um, okay, so this paint needs to dry, right? I mean, we don't want it, we can't go in the next layer unless we um, dry it off. So I have to, I'll show you the other one that I made and I didn't like the colors at all. So we're gonna see, there we go. Now I've got some of that cleared off so I can see what's underneath. And that's what it's so much fun about. It's like basically you're doing this collage and then you cover it up and then you reveal some of the uh, colors. And that is totally inspired by Bob Burge. Now somebody said, I just sighed out loud and then like, <laughs> exactly. And that's what's so much fun about my art, right? You just have so much fun. So, and you get like, I'm just gonna make a big old mess. So I'm gonna set this aside. I really kind of like it just because just like that, it's really pretty you know I'm kind of a I'm sort of attached to it actually but no I can't get attached because what's going to happen is I'm going to want to do some more now this one I'm sorry to say I didn't like this one at all the red now that's what Bob uses some red and yellow and and then you know I don't really use a lot of red <laughs> I kind of stay shy away but it's the same technique I I put the collage paper down and then I did my thing so then I'm going to try something and I'm going to see if it's going to help. We're going to find out. I'm going to put some of that color over. I'm going to do another layer. Why not? Let's just see what happens with paint. Or even, well, we'll do paint and then I'm going to show you how I can do some washi paper over the paint even. Okay, so I'm going to grab my brush and since it's already wet with the same color, no big deal, I'm just going to put some, just going to put some color on it. And there's already some texture. Ooh. All right, so that texture is showing me. Ooh, okay. See that texture underneath? Wow. I really do want to get rid of that red. It's just too too much. So there we go. I got to cover it up. I'm going to grab a little zinc white. Put that over it. Oh, I know. It's, I'm having fun, you guys. Phoebe, I'm having too much fun. <laughs> um, here we go. So I'm just going to cover it up, do the same thing. This is... Not was not in the plan, but I'm going to do it anyway because I just didn't like that red. Now I can leave a little red popping through, but I just didn't want it to be the dynamic, the major color. Just too, too, too much. All right, now and while it's still wet, I'm going to go ahead and put that in the thing, and I'm going to do some serious mark making. We'll see. We'll see if I can do it. Now it's uh, now with the 
Yeah, it's doing it. The same thing, basically. Not as well, though, if you look, if you notice, I'm not getting as much lift as I did with the uh, paper only. So I'm getting some, but not nearly the same amount. So let's see if I can get a little bit more just doing this, just taking this catalyst and just really digging in. Let's see. Now, yes, I'm getting a little better. So a little more pressure, and I'm getting some nice kind of marks here. That's looking better already. <laughs> just didn't like that solid red. It's just, oh, hello. So, oh, yeah, now we're talking. So this is fun. I'm, now I'm just digging right in, and I'm creating kind of this mess, but that's all right. It's kind of looking very textured and layered. Now, the washi paper that's underneath is kind of, almost disappeared the um and i have to let this dry but i'm going to do something a little unconventional i'm not going to let it dry i'm just going to put it over and i'm going to grab some of the usagami that i had done earlier there it is it's the textured this one i think this one is really kind of needs it needs this and i'm going to take um this piece right here and i'm not going to cut right i don't have to cut to the edge perfectly because it has a nice edge you know, the color is nice. There we go. And I'm going to stick that right on top. And I'm going to do it like maybe here. And I'm doing it in the wet paint. I know it's crazy, but I'm doing it. I've never done this before. So, you know, I'm just being brave and I'm going to just experiment. And usually that's when the best things happen or the, bis the biggest disasters, one or the other, right? But this is, you just experiment and you can create all kinds of Let's see, where do I want that? Right there, maybe. And I'm going to just sit it right on top of the wet paint, and it's going to kind of sink in, which it is. Feels really nice. It's uh, kind of, the wet paint is actually serving as a glue, which is pretty cool. And one more piece. I'm going to do a little, uh, maybe this corner here, right here. I'm just going to do this little corner right in the corner. I need that to cut a, a third element, right? And I'm going to grab my uh, other, this one here, and I'm going to put some medium over it. Or maybe some zinc white, because zinc white is a translucent medium. And I'm going to put a little bit in just, oh, that's a new one. I can't use that one. I have to go through that. I'm going to use some matte medium. Let's just do it. A little matte medium. I'm going to just dribble it over the usagami like that. Not a whole lot. And I'm going to just kind of work it and using my little quarter inch or half inch brush and I'm kind of working it into the, oh yes. Now, look what's happening. I don't know if you see this, but I can see it very clearly. The medium is kind of going soaking through the usagami and it's kind of disappearing and allowing that underlayer to show through, which I think is really pretty cool. And I'm feeling the texture because the usagami is so thin, I'm feeling that nice texture that's underneath that other layer. I'm just got a, I've got a really texturized piece here. I'm just going to kind of cover that. And now I'm just going to use that medium and I'm going to kind of go over the whole thing. And it's sort of blending the colors a little bit, which is kind of what I was looking for, since they're still wet. And while it's still wet, I'm able to do some other things. Let's see. If, there, if you hear any noise in the background, we are doing things in our kitchen. We're doing a remodel, so it's a little, it might be a little noisy in there. I'm not doing it. Somebody else is. <laughs> so I'm going to take my paint, um, take my brush, this fusion brush that's coming soon, and maybe you're going to tell people, I, I, I know it's coming. I'm actually doing something that I would do with a cheaper brush that I'm not worried about. I'm taking the water and I'm scrubbing into scrubbing the color out. And that's another little test on the, the versatility of this brush because I'm gonna just use this little thing to dab some of that off. Getting some of that red back. And let's see, maybe get another area where I'm gonna scrub a little bit out. Let's just see. And I'm just kind of scrubbing. I'm just trying to get through that damp or that wet layer of acrylic. And then I'm gonna lift up until, yep, it holds up really nice. And then, yep, now I've got that color coming back. I kind of like that. And I'm also seeing the layers underneath, which I really like. This will get trimmed off, just like I trim all the others, right at the edge. And then it looks a lot better. 
<laughs> now, what's this going to be, right? We don't know. It could be a, it could be a greeting card. I could cut this up into fourths and make a um, some artist trading cards. I, I'm not sure yet. We'll see. But this is really fun. I just wanted to see what this brush was capable of and what my uh, Usagami is capable of. Look at it's so sturdy. I'm able to put water over this medium and just kind of go through this. And I love these little under layers of texture and color. And I, it needs a little white, more white. So I'm going to do kind of what I did. And I thought it was so fun. By the way, Karen, um, Lori or Lynn was asking, does the Usagami stay smooth when you brush over it? It certainly does. I've been, it doesn't, if you use, if you have the smooth side up, the smooth side up, yeah, it's not tearing apart as I was really pretty aggressive with my brush. And look what I just did. I finished it. I, I added a little highlight by just drizzling some paint over that. And I really, I like that now. <laughs> so, so that, and now, of course, it's going to take, Few hours probably to dry. You can take if you wanted to add some more little bits like highlights, you could take your paint and you could, I'm just going to put a little bit right in my, just right here, and I'm just going to make some little dots, just some light little, just little, little spits, spots, spits, <laughs> just little dots to make marks. And highlights over my uh, paper. Yep, that is fun. Looks like a little galaxy of, I don't know, color and it's fun. I really like that. So I'll put one more area somewhere maybe in here. See, I'm just kind of making dots. That's an, another very relaxing thing to do is just make dots with with your paint onto the washi paper and it just look it just kind of adds to the whole layering on that so i'm going to have to set that aside and let that dry i'll post pictures of it i guess when it is completely dry but there there's that little fun collage and if i cut it up it really i think i make a nice may, maybe make a nice uh something so the last part is i usually like to do and i have to put this somewhere where somewhere <laughs> try to find a place for it to dry. So let's go back to this one. I worked. It's still wet though. The uh, one with the with the um, nori paste is still wet. In fact, it's not even stuck down yet. So that's going to take a long time. But I can do the same kind of technique and get a totally different look for it. So any questions on uh, the usagami or the um, other papers that we have? Well, let's say. If you have questions, I'm here. And yeah, well, it's actually two minutes before we. And I think I did pretty good. Oh, the last part, last but not least, and then then I'm done. Um, then you please ask questions. So this I kind of did these over the few days, and they're not quite done. I don't know. There's something about it that's just not quite done. And usually I'll just take a little, you know, watercolor focal point, like maybe there, and you know, a little bit of glue. I think that looks kind of good. Just a little something, you know, just something to kind of brighten that up. Or you can use a leaf. I could use another leaf, maybe. Of course, there's a leaf already there. But you see how the process is. It's just taking things that you've already, you know, you've created and you've spent time and take all those little bits and pieces and then turn them, you know, put them, you know, make something happen. There. I think, I think that one's fun. So there you go. I hope that you had fun. Um, kind of seeing the the process and that you're inspired to try doing collage and it is a totally different activity the collage process as you see is chaotic and messy but it can also be very peaceful and calming it just depends on how you know what your goal is is it just for fun and exploration or do you have something in mind and today i'm showing you collage is just for fun and exploration <laughs> And with the washi papers, I'm able to layer and have lots of fun, lots of fun with these. Right? And then exactly. um, Chris was asking a question, and I think she means about the painted papers. Um, oh, yes. Asked, the papers come in a package of different patterns. So Right. So let me show papers, you this quickly. Yeah. Um, let me turn, let me move this out of the way. My messy space. Okay, so that's clean. Now, the origami papers that we have just 
these are the newest one. No, these are, this is the newest set, which is coming. When are these arriving, Phoebe? These ones, are those the, those are the collage ones. Um, we, we actually have the collage ones and the painted papers. The collage ones are the latest ones that we, um, got. I think it's a mix of painted paper and collage ones in front, maybe. Um, so the collage, this is the collage and then I have the painted papers here. Okay, cool. Um, so they, we have them here and they're just getting picked up by different art supply stores, especially because we just came back from a trade show. So, um, that was, a uh, last week. So you should so be they are in stock. finding them. Yeah. At some of your favorite stores, but you could always reach out to us if you need help finding where the best place is for you to buy them. Um, but I usually start online. Yeah. So let me show you just because you haven't seen them yet and they are in stock. And now that they're in stock. Now you can order them. And so this one is called a uh, composition. And what they are is they're just a series of collages that have already been done in the same technique you just saw pretty much. And um, except they're, you know, there's, you get several sheets of the same pattern. You get, let's see how many colorways, I forget already, six designs and uh, you get four of each. You get 24 sheets. So that is, look at these. Aren't these fun? So they're already started. You already got that first layer that sometimes people go, oh, gosh, I'm, I don't know how to start. Well, you've got to start. And then you can build on those layers. Um, after these are just a nice little start. And I love these. They're so much fun. They're great for origami, too, of course. These are acid-free, and they're a little bit more heavyweight than standard origami paper. So they're amazing for flush. This is Actually, I think this is my favorite one. I'm going to have to show you this one. If you haven't seen it yet, this one's called, I don't know. That one's called Black and White. Oh. And the reason it's called Black and White, because it is Black and White. Mostly, they're kind of neutrals. They're really neutral, kind of soft, neutral tones, mostly Black and White, with a little bit of, you know, cool and warm tones. But I love these. They've got all kinds of little bits and pieces and layers using the usagami, some of the rice paper, washi papers that have been gel printed. Aren't these pretty? I just, I love them. <laughs> I just think they're so cool. Um, even this part, this little bit right here, this little under piece is one of our, the coloring origami. I just used that in the collage and there it is, a little, a little tiny snippet of one of the papers that we already carry, <laughs> which is kind of cool. But this is the uh, black and white. And then the other one, is called all blue and that's another one i love blue and i think blue is just a color that most people love i mean who doesn't love blue right it's peaceful it's calming it's a really a nice color just to for it's easy it's easy on the eyes and this one has all these great fun little marks made with um artist pencil or artist crayons very simple, high contrast stuff. So, yes, you can do collage right off, you know, right out of the gate with these. And of course, you can fold them as well and make book covers and all kinds of stuff. So, I hope that you enjoyed this. And if there's any more questions, please ask. <laughs> no, I think that was amazing. I think that was like a masterclass in what people know that you create. So I think this is a really good one. Um, and I don't see any unanswered questions. I think you did a great job answering what everybody was wondering. Well, I'm glad because I I really want everyone, the, the, the real sort of issue, not the issue, what am I saying? The goal of today's live stream is to not teach you collage because, you know, there's so much to, there's so much that goes into it, but to to share, to inspire you to really try using washi paper in your collage because it makes it so much more fun. I mean, it really does. You get so many, you can build layers, you can crinkle it. There's textures you can make. It's great and it's strong. So, and I know one of you, I think Lynn, you asked if the paper, you know, uh, lifts or tears when you're brushing it. And I haven't seen it do that. I was, I was really going crazy with that one and it did not tear it. This one I did with the nori, and this one I was doing with the um, acrylic paint, and it did not lift at all. See, the image is pure. There's no tearing at all. So, and the paste, yes, we this paste is one of our standards. <laughs> We've had it a long time. 
So there it is. I hope you had fun. I sure did. The hour went way too fast.